Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today in this video, I love the LeBron and JJ Redick podcast and they're going to break down what makes the Celtics offense almost impossible to stop. The Celtics had the number one offense, I believe, efficiency wise or whatever rating all time. So definitely the offense is amazing. They had the best offense in the league. So let's see from the mastermind himself, LeBron James and JJ Redick, why they're so great. And for more content like this, make sure to like this video. Let's hop right into it. What's the best thing they do? Um, I think they, they do it with the pass that a lot of people don't really give them credit for. Um, I think their dribble penetration, and once they see the defense start to rotate, they do it with the pass. Um, uh, highlights. To be honest, throughout the course of the 48-minute game, all movement. they really only have two ISO guys, um, you know, and that's Jason Tatum and that's Jalen Brown. Obviously, uh, Peyton Pritchard has the ability to, to play low, low ISO ball as well, but they just have two ISO guys. Shout out Peyton Pritchard. Guys, um, they move off the pass. Um, what a bench player. The defense shifting. Um, you've lowered it up on those two great guards or, you know, great wings and, and, and Jason and Jalen. And then not, now that's when their personnel really kicks in. That's when Derek White is playing on a closeout. That's when Drew Holiday is playing on a closeout. You know, that's when Peyton Pritchard is playing on a closeout. Al Horford plays on a closeout, you know, and I think that's, they don't get enough credit for their ball movement um, when they're driving the baseline or driving the 45, the slot, um, and getting the yeah, defense rotated. Yeah, give me that. I kind of had a 45-degree um, angle from the know, wing to the basket. That, that, okay, that yeah. is their, that's their, um, you know, their superpower. Is once that ball gets to popping and they got five guys around that perimeter um, that can all shoot the three, they all shoot in high 30s, some of them in the 40s, obviously. Um, but I don't think they get enough credit um, with the, how they play with the pass and, and, and the body movement that they have. Yeah, I, I, I think that I would describe what you're saying as boss, the Boston Celtics are at their best when they're doing that. Yeah. They're at mm -hmm. their best when they're getting you in rotation. And they create that in a number of ways. You bring up the ISO stuff. And when they are five out, you know, they're spaced. They almost always have five shooters on the floor. Now, against the Pacers, Cornette was out there some because Porzingis was not playing. Tillman yep. was out there some. He's playing was now, out there some. And he looked so good in game one. They some lineups where they had four shooters. Yeah. <laughs> you know, only four. <laughs> only four. Only four. Only four shooters. But for the most part, for the most part, <laughs> in their eight-man rotation, when they're healthy, they got five shooters. And so you bring up the 45, and, and I think that's, you know, a great example of just how they get you in rotation. So... Uh, this is, let's just say it's Jalen Brown okay, getting to me. his right hand, right? Yep. Jalen Brown getting to his right hand. Yep. And this low guy has to come over, mm -hmm. right? So now you've created a two-on-one over here. As this guy comes over, let's say he kicks to the corner. Yep. Okay. Now, you're, you're at that point, the, Boston has won the possession. Yep. Boston has won the possession because you are now in rotation, right? Yep. X guy goes... Somebody's flying at the slot guy, yep. and it's just beating you with the pass. And they're all capable of playing out of closeouts, as you mentioned. So I think I think the spacing is to me what starts everything for them offensively. Yep. Um, and and the way they're able to get to on the ball, the play that I I tell you, and he's gonna break down a play. JJ Redick, the way he breaks down stuff. I don't know. Don't be the Lakers coach. Don't be the Lakers coach. But I think one day he should be a coach in the NBA. I think he should just a more low key team coach them up. Get the, I think he can really be a good coach. I just don't think he should be the Lakers coach, and he won't be. You know, I got bamboozled by that. But um, definitely a great breakdown of the Boston Celtics offense. Um, their offense with five shooters. I mean, having shooting at that level is so such a big benefit everyone should be trying to do that right uh the rockets and i'm a rockets fan three-point shooting was our whole thing spacing was our whole thing so you know steph curry and the warriors obviously popularized the three because they won but the rockets we were kind of we were the team we had ryan anderson out there shooting them threes capella couldn't shoot but you know we were jacking up threes and the the celtics obviously have a lot of really capable shooters they have five people who can shoot space the floor allows you get you know drive to the basket really helps with that so you know, and their offense, they're, it's built to win the championship this year. So we'll see if they continue um, and finish the job. I love, and I, this is what I want to sort of talk about with you today. The play that I love, and I, this is what I want to sort of talk about with you today, 
is there, uh, you call it horns too, or you call yeah, it V2? Horns too. Yeah, V2. You call it horns, horns too. We yeah. talked about horns too chest yeah. uh, earlier, but um, in one of the other episodes, I want to okay. talk about their horns too and how sort of they run it. And we'll just put Al Horford over there and Drew over here. And we'll just say Porzingis is not in the lineup for this. So they run it a bunch of different ways. The, this is, to me, the best thing they do. This is Jason Tatum right here. Correct. Let's just say he's in that sort of right elbow area. Mm -hmm. Using Jason Tatum as a screener because Derek White's defender is oftentimes one of the weaker guys. Yep. It, it, this could also be Drew up here. So they yep. use whoever the weakest guy along with JB and JT. Yep. And Jason Tatum as a screener creates so much. So let's say they run their their uh, horns to flare. Okay. Uh, Derek White makes the pass. Jason Tatum sets the flare. Yep. There are so many things they get out of this. So yep. obviously Derek White for three, if they don't switch. Derek White curling, JB hits him. Now all of a sudden you've got shooters, you've got Derek White getting a layup. Um, the other reason I really like this is because they do, I think, a better job than as a better job than anyone on these rip screens when there is a switch. JT setting this rip screen on Derek White. Okay. If they know they're switching, they're the slip. angle they set this mm -hmm. and slip. Mm -hmm. Yep. They they get that so much. And again, so everything is built off of spacing. Yep. But the yep. way they're able to manipulate matchups. Do you think? Whether it is Dallas, whether it is Minnesota, do you think, number one, do you think they have the right personnel? Number two, specifically with this Horns 2 flare, we'll talk about the other actions out of Horns 2 in a second, but with this Horns 2 flare, is switching the right call against the Celtics, or is there a better way to do it? I don't know what that play I, I mean, I think <laughs> that didn't work, but... <laughs> showing any great team a steady diet of the same... Um, the same thing throughout the course of 48 minutes is going to be a death to you. You have to switch it up. You have to change pitches. You know, um, you can't just show, you know, great players and great teams a, a steady diet of the same, you know, anything. Um, they will get, uh, they will get too comfortable. They will understand it. They will start seeing it, and then they'll they'll expose it. You know, so you know, I think there's, there are times where you can start, you can switch that action. Um, but there's times where you have to be extremely physical and body up and, and, and try to, you know, force the catch out. You can't let the, the opposite guy, if it's Jalen Brown or if it's Al Horford or if it's Drew Holiday, catch the ball right at the elbow. You have to push them off the elbow a, just a, maybe just a little bit, you know. And, you know, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of the conversations need to be had before you even get on the floor. You know, you need to be talking about, okay, listen, this is nut crunching time. These are the sets that they're going to go to because they know they're going to get a good shot out of it. So we got to be ready for it, you know. But, you know, you, like you said, Joe do a great job of, of putting those guys in position and understanding who's on the other team when they're guarding them. So you look at, you know, with this matchup with Dallas, um, you know, obviously you got you got Kyrie, you got Luka, um, you got P.J. Washington, um, Derek Jones and uh, Gafford or Lively um, starting at that at that five. That that position, I'm guessing that Kyrie would be on Derek White. Um, um, you know, you'll have Derek Jones and PJ. They'll decide who will be on Jalen Brown and Tatum. You have Luca on Drew Holiday. They're trying to take away his post ups because uh, that's where Drew is really good. We've seen how many times he big shouldered Obi Toppin. You know, in late games, you know, so you're trying to Siakam, put him. Siakam, big shoulder, early in that and ones, and ones, you know, he big shoulder those guys. So you want to try to keep a bigger body on Drew. And then you'll have Lively or um, Gafford on Al Horford or Przingis if he's if he's available. So they'll probably have whoever Kyrie is guarding initiate that offense that we just drew up and and, and see if they can get the switch. See if they don't switch. Can Tatum get a nice clean screen where Derek White or Drew Holiday gets a layup off that foot, off that yeah, flare, show me, show me gets some. a three off the flare, cut to the basket, get a layup. This is the worst thing that can happen. Stop. That two guys go with one. Where Tatum sets the rip screen, Kyrie right. 
is afraid to take the body off Derek White and he curls around and PJ or Derek Jones goes with them and now Jason Tatum steps back for a three by himself. That is the worst thing that can happen. So you have to go in with a definite game plan on, this is what we're gonna start with. Let's see if that works. If it doesn't, we'll be ready to make the adjustment. And they definitely do. They need to. There's a, a couple things I want to run back out of this, but for the most part, let's just uh, let's just have two offensive players here. Yeah. Okay. And let's just say this is Jalen, and, and let's say you do a good job switching, uh, and this ends up being Jason Tatum, and whoever this guy initiated the offense, it could be Drew, it could be Derek, has now cut through to the basket. Correct. Uh, it's interesting because a lot of teams when you get to this point and you have this 45, as you said, ISO or slot ISO, a lot of teams after this guy is cut through will send him weak side to the dunker yep. spot. Mm -hmm. Boston, a lot of times, they don't do it always, but a lot of times, this is a lot of times Derek, could be Al Horford, a lot of times it's Drew as well. Mm -hmm. They actually sit the dunker spot in the strong side. Mm -hmm. okay. And if Jason Tatum is able to get to his strong hand this guy, like, doesn't ever help. It's actually a bizarre. And Tatum could just drive and score. And the other thing it creates, though, is you're essentially having these two weak side defenders then make a decision. How much do I want to help? Right? You're actually, t in some ways, you're taking this guy off the floor. Yeah, if you, you put him, If you put him weak side, you know this. Uh, if you put, let's say it's Derek White weak side, this guy now is the low man. Yep. This guy is the X man. He can play too. Yep, he can play too. So, <clears throat> so by so by Boston putting that guy on a strong block, it's almost essentially like defender. You almost like you feel like don't help strong side, strong side shooter. Right. You, so you kind of like, do I go help? Do I help up? You know, it's it's the same kind of trigger that Denver gives you when Joker drives right. And you got Aaron Gordon right there. It's like, do I help up or do I stay back? Yeah, do I play the cat I and mouse it. game? I if that. I help okay. up, lob to Aaron Gordon. You know, so it's very challenging. We've seen, like we just seen in these conference finals, we've seen many times where Jalen Brown or Tatum would drive that slot and either X2 or 3 who's down there guarding Drew or um, um, Derek White would help up. Those guys get just an easy layup. Or if they don't, you get a walk-in layup for either one of those guys. So it's uh that's it's pretty smart thinking on Joe and his staff. Hey guys. I ain't gonna lie to you. That they they actually really good at explaining stuff. They really good coaches. They talk, I mean that that makes sense. That's actually smart. Because it puts you in a position like, do I help or do I if you put on the strong side, that's 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 smart. That I'm, that really that's really good coaching, man. Hey, shout out JJ Reddy, bro. You need to be, and a shout out Joe Mazzula. Joe Mazzula was getting a lot of flack last year. He lost in the conference finals, but he's a very smart, smart offensive coach. Mimi Odoka is obviously, I think he's probably better defensively, and he's helping the Rockets become a good top 10 defensive team. But I think Joe Mazzula is a better offensive uh, offensive coach, and they're proving it. They had a great game one. We'll see if they continue in game two and more. But hey, for more content like this, make sure to like the video. I love reacting to these. I, I'm learning as I, you know. Because they they good teachers, man. They teach and soon. They, they, this is a really good podcast. So, hey, definitely check out this podcast. You know, obviously, they don't need no promotion from me. But, hey, go check out the podcast. Uh, go subscribe to their channel. Subscribe to my channel. Roll to 1,000 subs. Hey, I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. And I'm out of here. Peace.